Konnichiwa. So far in this course, we've been tacitly assuming that a logic value of 1 represents on or active. We'll discuss here how that is not necessarily the case, which will expand our understanding of future combinational circuits. You walk into a room. You see that the light switch is flipped up, but the lamp isn't on. What is the problem? You inspect the light bulb and see no issues. You check the plug leading to the lamp and it's connected. Finally, you give up and walk out of the room instinctively flipping down the switch on your way out. Suddenly, the lamp turns on. Ah, you made the common assumption that up means on for a light switch. This is usually the case, but not always. That example is obvious for a physical situation, and its lesson applies to logic circuits as well. A value of 1 does not necessarily mean the active case. Some devices are designed to be activated by a low or zero value. It is important to clarify exactly which inputs and outputs are active low and which are active high. Let's look at examples on these next two slides. The examples will be identical, except one requests an active high output and the other an active low output. Here, the task is to develop a circuit that accepts a 3-bit unsigned number and outputs high if the number equals 6 in decimal. We begin by defining the input and output variables. Then we take advantage of our knowledge that binary 110 equals decimal 6. This means that we can use the min term A2 and A1 and A0 prime to define the output. This min term will equal 1 if and only if the three inputs are 1, 1, 0. For any other input combination, it will equal 0. Finally, we build this simple circuit based on the equation using an AND gate. Nothing new here. Now, our task is to develop a circuit that accepts a 3-bit unsigned number and outputs low if the number equals 6. I just changed one word in the problem statement. As a result, the following design will be just the complement of what we saw before. Again, we define our variables and recall that decimal 6 equals binary 110. Next, we use the same min term in the equation and simply complement the whole term. The parentheses are important here. This leads to a circuit just like what we saw before, but with the complement bubble at the end. So instead of an AND gate, we have a NAND gate. Both this slide and the previous have a circuit that uniquely identifies when decimal 6 is on the inputs. The active low example here outputs a 0 when we input 6. For any non-6 input, the output is 1. This circuit does its job as long as we clearly define the inputs and outputs. We've talked many times about setting the context of numbers. Are they decimal or binary, unsigned or two's complement form, etc. It is also important to set the context of circuits by defining each variable as active low or active high.